Well, even using just two cups of the hydrated lime, you can still, you can see there's still some sedimentation. So you could actually probably use a little bit less than that. But like I said, as long as you mix it up in the mixer or well with your hands, it will uh, not even cause a problem at all. So, also too, it's like you see I have a little bit of water stuffed in there. If I was going to do another batch with the lime, you wouldn't even need to clean it out. You would just fill it right back up with cold water and uh, about two cups of the lime and have another go at it. Um, so, I'm going to clean the barrel out though so I can, you know, make sure there's no cross contamination or, you know, pretty much to keep uh, everything straight. And I'm going to fill it up again with cold water and add some ashes and some soap. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add another half cup of soap. I'm going to use the soap for both the lime tech and the ashes tech. The reason why ashes works is because it raises the pH like the lime. It probably has some other properties to it as well. And Aloha Medicinals they say that you want to use about nine pounds of sifted ashes where you, you can see here I've taken some wood fire ashes from the fireplace. I probably wouldn't advise to use the ashes from a fire pit like outdoors unless you immediately take them and put them into a, a closed can so the, the outdoor air doesn't get into it uh, so much. But uh, I've sifted these with a strainer well, a metal, a metal sieve, metal sieve, so it's pretty, pretty fine siftings, because you want it as fine as possible. But anyhow, the Medi Aloha Medicinals website says that you want to use nine pounds of sifted ashes per 150 liters of water. Well, you know, pretty much three quarters of the way full, which seems to me to be way too much. Like you're going to have a lot of it settle to the bottom. So I'm just going to try about one gallon of ashes, measure it out by volume, which is about one gallon worth. I'm going to mix that in and see how it does. If it doesn't have any settle to the bottom, then I know I probably need to add more. Obviously, if it settles too much, then I know. Whew. Be careful, too, when you're dumping in the uh, lime that you see all this dust come up. Dumping it all at once, then mix it in. Keep your head away from it so you don't breathe any of that in you can see it's very ashy I already feel some grit at the bottom get that soap nice and mixed up too by the way this smells pretty pleasant with the soap and the, the lime kind of earthy ashes you know not so bad either being that this barrel, I probably used it about a dozen or so times since I've made it, and it still reeks of uh, synthetic uh, fruit juice drink of some sort. I can't really pinpoint what it is, but like the actual extract of it when I turn it on with the hot water, it stinks very much. You can you also see that I've realized, hey, you know, since I'm using cold water now, and it's not going to make the barrel so flexible. I'm going to go back to trying my uh, little roller idea and you can see here it's thin it in a little bit but I bet I can still spin it. So I'm going to add the hulls in, do the same deal, get the uh, make sure they're mixed in well, all the everything's rinsed off from the inside and outside, cover it with some plastic again and I'm going to let it soak for two hours as well. You see, this is great. I got some holes pressing while I'm making a new batch. I could probably do four batches in a day then. Easy. Where I'm right now, the most I could do is two batches is the heat method. 
and that's from starting at 9 in the morning to about 10 o'clock at night. So it saves me a lot of time, and I'm happy about that. All right, let's get back to uh, seeing how this all mixes up in the mixer. You can see the lime-soaked hulls look pretty much like the heat-treated hulls. No real leftover moisture. So, I'm going to pack this all into the logs. Um, again, if you don't re remember that when I'm using this bucket here and I take the uh, tubing off of it full of the cottonseed hulls, I'm not packing them down anymore. I'm leaving it pretty much loose and then I roll it flat and the looseness of it allows me to get it f flatter than it normally would be. So I'm going to pack these into the logs and move on to the ashes soaked cottonseed hulls. Alright, let's see if this barrel is stiff enough to uh, use my little frame down here with the rollers on it. Oh, yeah, It's a little tight. But I think it's going to work. Yep. That's about as far down as you need to take it. So that's cool. It wasn't a waste of a project. What I may do is build another sideways design barrel and uh, maybe keep this one parked over on the side. It's like I can do two bashes at once and use the uh, shelving over here. Then I can just pour it from over there down to this direction and from over here to this direction. Just do everything at once. Come on back. Surprisingly, too, the uh, ashes-soaked cottonseed hulls don't smell like a fireplace. They actually s still smell like palm olive soap. So I'm glad that worked. Again, I'm going to press it and treat it just the same. Use the same amount of uh, plaster of Paris. Get the logs built. And then, in several days, when I see these logs over here begin to uh, pin, I'll give an update and hopefully we'll start seeing some uh, success with this method and I'll definitely start using it instead of heat pasteurization in the future.